what is up everybody 9 to 5 gamers here again with another video this one is going to be about deck building because i know that deck building can be a pain in the rear end for some of y'all but don't worry i'm here to make that a little bit easier for you so let's just get into it real quick so first things you want to do is number one pick your hero okay i'm gonna pick miss marvel because honestly um not that she's hard to build but just a lot of people don't realize how good she is I think she's really underrated as a character. I think some people really like count her out, but she's actually very, very good. Some people will say, man, I don't even know how to play as this girl. And so a lot of people just avoid her at all costs, but that's not gonna be the case for Miss Marvel today. We're gonna show you how to build a deck for her. And um, so pick your hero, number one. Step two, pick your villain, right? Pick the villain you wanna fight against, okay? Cause you don't, you're gonna, you wanna deck build not around you're gonna build build around the hero, but you also want to build according to your villain, right? Like for example, Rhino, he's very good at attacking, but he's not very good at scheming. And so every turn, he's gonna be putting one threat on, right? And then attacking you. So if I play Justice, for example, right? And there are cards in there that say like, remove four threat from a scheme and you pay two for it. Well, if I'm paying two to remove four threat and I'm only removing one, then Justice isn't really worth playing. Can I play Justice against Rhino? Sure. It's just going to take a, lot, a little longer than it would if you were playing another uh, game. Uh, protection is good. You could play Protection. Protection, I think, is getting to a good point in the game where they're getting some more attack events and things like that um, to, to, to make it a, a more viable play uh, to play with. Um, leadership is great, doesn't have a lot of events. And um, let me tell you, right off the bat with Miss Marvel, you want events in her deck. You want a lot of events. Um, that's what her, her main thing is, but we'll get to that. So know your villain, um, know what he's good at. We're gonna pick aggression because we just wanna go off on Rhino and attack him. Then another thing is um, play, um, in order to get to know a villain, you really gotta learn to play by playing the game, right? Like, so just take the pre-constructed deck that the the, the, the character comes with. Play against Rhino a few times. That's what I always do when I get a deck. I play against Rhino or against Claw. Claw is a very good villain to uh, play against because he does a lot of everything. But um, play against Rhino a few times. Get a feel for his cards. You'll learn he has a lot of tough. He heals a little bit. But he's got a lot of attack cards, cards that stun you and stuff like that. He doesn't have a lot of minions, so that's good to know. It's like, you know, he has like maybe like four or five minions. Um, so knowing that, then it makes it easier to build your hero in a suitable way to beat this villain. So knowing what the villain can do is really good because it helps you to play against them properly. Now, Ms. Marvel, what do we know about her? Well, first of all, she has a hand size of six and hit points of 10. On this side, she has a hand size of five. Okay, so she's not like some other heroes. We won't mention any names, <coughs> but the, people like the Hulk, for example, I guess I will mention names, only has a hand size of four. So with Hulk, you want a lot of cards in his deck that can uh, draw you cards um, because he needs a lot of help with the hand size. Um, but, Ms. but Kamala Khan, for example, she has a lot of cards that help her draw cards. So she's not somebody you would want to put a whole bunch of draw cards into because she already has that built in. She heals for five. That's crazy. Look at Hulk. I mean, FFG, <laughs> Final Fantasy. I always say Final Fantasy, it's Fantasy Flights. RIP, Fantasy Flights. What were you thinking? Like what, what the heck is this? How are you gonna give this guy four recovery and Kamala Khan five? Like I get the heroes and I understand what they can do in their, their but this guy has super regener regenerative abilities, bro. You can't even like, if you were to try to chop his head off, he would just turn into the Hulk and then like, you can't kill the Hulk. And so, um, I never understood that. But anyways, um, so let's look at her ability. Her ability says that you can uh, discard cards from the top of your deck until you discard a Miss Marvel card, then add that card to your hand. That's a free card draw every time you're an alter ego. That's already really good, okay? When you flip over to her other side, she has a 111 stat line, which shows you that the developers were trying to, 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 to nudge you and go, hey, hey, don't attack with her. Don't defend with her. Don't thwart with her. There's a reason for that because of that ability right there. Morphogenics response after you play an attack, thwart, or defense event. 
exhaust Miss Marvel and return that event to your hand. You play an event and then get it right back. So what would you rather do? Play Big Hands, which is one of her cards, does four damage. You wanna do four damage and then attack for one and do five, or attack for four, exhaust, get Big Hands back and play it again and then do eight damage. Yeah, so you understand what she's good at and what she's not. So now that we know what she can do, Let's take a look at some of her, um, her Alter Ego cards, okay? So these are cards that can only be played while in Alter Ego. So first off, we have Bruno Corelli. Bruno Corelli says that you can exhaust him and attach a card to him face down. What that means is that you can do this and over three turns, you would have accumulated three cards behind him, like so. And then when the time comes, you don't have to be an Alter Ego. Sorry, the shadow is kind of messing it up. You don't have to be an alter ego to use the action. You can be in any form. What do you do? Draw up to three cards. That's so good. Imagine drawing three cards from this. That's such a good card. So Bruno Corelli, really underrated as a card. Now, the other card, Amir Khan. Exhaust him and place one card from your discard into the bottom of your deck, then draw a card. Do you understand how good that is? So if I paid for a card using energy, and I discard this, when I exhaust him, I could put this back into my deck and it's not over yet. But wait, there's more. You can actually draw a card as well. So draw a card, exhaust and draw three cards, uh, discard cards until you find a Miss Marvel, then draw it into your hand. Draw, draw, draw. She has a lot of draw power on her, her, her alter ego side. Nakia says that you can exhaust her. Sorry, I put it up. Nakia says you can exhaust her and reduce the cost of the next card you play um, this phase by one. That means the whole phase, y'all. That means that you can exhaust her while you're in alter ego because it's an alter ego action. Exhaust her, then flip to Ms. Marvel and then play an attack event for one card less. So that's really, really good. So what do we notice here? We notice kind of a trend. I'm going to move this more towards the center. Sorry. Um, we notice kind of a trend that you want to be an alter ego because you can draw a lot of cards when you are. So then the trend we are starting to see is that this Ms. Marvel likes to flip back and forth a lot. So play her that way. Play her, flip her back, flip her over, flip her back, and keep doing that. Another card she has, Red Dagger. This is her signature ally. He has two Thor through attack, three um, health. But his ability says that when Red Dagger is defeated, that you can spend two resources, resources of different types, which she has a lot of different types, deal two damage to an enemy, and then return Dagger to your hand. So basically, you can block with him the turn before, pay two resources, get him back into your hand, and on your next turn, you could probably play him if you have the, the hand size for it. Um, but then he'll do two damage. So that could be really, really good. It could get rid of stun. It can take out a minion. This is a very good card. And now that we've gone through all of her Alter Ego cards, um, Red Dagger's not an Alter Ego, but um, now that we've seen those, now we can go through her other cards. So she has a couple of upgrades you want to get into play as soon as possible. Biokinetic Polymer Suit, generate a wild resource for an, a, for an event. So any event you play will cost one resource less and also it generates a wild resource. So that means that if there's like a, a something attached to it, like if you paid for this card using a physical resource, um, do this extra ability. She takes care of that because wild counts as anything when you're spending it. So this is really good. It only works on events though. So make sure you don't use it to pay for anything else. And Biggin, uh, when you play an attack event, exhaust and Biggin, and then increase the amount of damage that event deals by two. So and Biggin can take her, um, sorry, wrong card. What happened here? I had these in, I had these in order. Anyway, so like for example, Big Hands is an attack event, does four damage to an enemy for two uh, cost. So two for four is not bad. It's not that great either. But if you have Embiggen in play, you exhaust it. Now this does six. And I can't even begin to tell you how amazing that is, not just with her cards, but with other cards that you can put into the build. So she's got three of those in her deck. Then you have Shrink, which is the same thing as in Megan, except for Thort events. So she can basically use a Thort event such as, uh, where is this other one at? Oh, it's over here. Now sneak by, what does it do? 
Remove three threat from a scheme and it only costs two, but if you shrink it, then you remove five threat for a scheme again. Sorry to pick on this dude so much, but I have to uh, I have to pick on him because honestly, um, I like what um, I like what Team Covenant calls this a suboptimal leap. Remove three threat from a scheme, five threat if you paid for this card using only physical resources. Three cost, five threat, and you have to pay for it with all physical resources. Okay, that's Hulk. But for her, she can play a sneak by, shrink it and you just paid two for five, which is better, and it doesn't have to be all physical. So you see what I'm saying? How this character is really good. Um, and then last but not least, she's got two wiggle room. Wiggle room just basically says that when you would take any amount of damage, you can prevent three of that damage and then draw a card. So let's say Rhino attacks for three, play a wiggle room, you avoid all of the damage, and then you draw a card to replace the wiggle room you just played. Super good, card draw, you see what I'm saying? So those are, that's her kit. So knowing what her kit is about, it's about events, right? It's about getting events into play. So naturally I'm like, you know what, let's play aggression. But before you, before you start picking your aspect cards, you want to go and pick your, um, your standard basic cards, right? So basic is the, the, the gray cards, right? So here's what I'm going to play. Most of her events are two cost. So we want these because they will let you play an event for one card. Does every deck need these three? Almost. It just depends what your cards are. If all of your cards are zero or one cost cards, then you don't obviously need these and you can get three free spaces, but we do and it's a very good card. Um, Nick Fury is an amazing uh, ally. Why? Because this guy can do it all. If you don't know what Nick Fury does by now, um, just look up his card online. Um, you've got Mockingbird who can stun the enemy. Rhino likes to attack a lot, so it would be good to keep him stunned. Ironheart, standard in almost every deck right now because she's Maria Hill, but a basic uh, Maria Hill. And um, she's a good blocker, but the only thing is that she doesn't uh, get played from the, um, from the discard pile with call... What is that thing called? I forgot. But we're not playing leadership, so that doesn't matter. But um, Ironheart, play from your hand, draw a card. Great card. Put that in the deck, right? So basically, like, look at this. You can get an ally into play who can do one attack or one thwart, and then for one card, and then you draw a card to replace it. Um, Avengers Mansion, draw a card. Super good. Imagine how many cards we can draw with that. Um, Quinn Carrier, uh, basically you exhaust it. It's biokinetic polymer suit. It's the same thing except this can be used for anything. This can only be used for events, but guess what? With two of these, you can pay for any of the events she has. So boom. And then endurance gives you plus three health. So she goes up to 13 health. That's awesome. With a big recovery like five, that you, go, you should last a lifetime. Now again, now we're going into the aggression side. Now there's obviously some cards that just don't synergize with her. For example, skill strike, great card you get plus two attack when you use your basic attack, right? So if I were to attack with Miss with, uh, Marvel, she would get plus two to her attack. But what is her attack? One. So, and I'm going to be exhausting her to return events to my hand. So should I even have this in my deck? No, it doesn't work well. She doesn't have any weapons, so I don't mean mean, mean swing, right? Um, moment of Triumph, a great card. It's, it's really good because after you attack and defeat an enemy, you heal the damage for all of the excess damage, but guess what? She only does one damage. You're not doing excess with that, so there's another card you don't need. So now I've showed you a bunch of cards that you won't use, but let's look at some you might. For example, Surprise Attack. Remember what we said about Miss Marvel? She likes to flip between um, uh, her forms. When, after you change form, Deal three damage to an enemy, four damage if you paid for this card using a physical resource. Look at how well this synergizes with her. Biokinetic Polymer Suit. Exhaust and generate a wild resource for an attack event. This is an attack event. It only costs one. This pays for this and big in it. You're doing six damage for, and you didn't pay a single card. You got it for free. My goodness, so good. Um, so surprise attack works. 
toe to toe, right? The enemy attacks you. You can use a wiggle room to get out of the attack and then deal eight damage after an embiggen to the enemy because this is an attack event. Piercing strike for two, deal five damage and it has pierce to get rid of the tough from Rhino. And into the fray, deal six damage to a minion, deal eight damage to a minion if you embiggen it. And then guess what? All of the excess gets turned into, you might say, there's no minions that have eight health except for like in claw. Why would you do that to a poor little, what are these guys called? Uh, I have one, the Hydra Bomber. <laughs> why in the world would you want to do eight damage to a Hydra Bomber? I'll tell you why. Because into the fray does eight damage when you embiggen it to a Hydra Bomber six damage gets sent into the scheme. That means that I kill the minion, take off two damage, and the six remaining damage that was like overkill basically, it gets taken from the th from this threat from the main scheme. That is so good. So the, uh, uh, now, uh, how many villain, but how many minions does he have? Not a lot. So we're not gonna play that many of these, just two, okay? These, this right here makes a really good deck for her. Um, there's now you say, well, how, how do you deal with threat? I mean, we have that last one, but what if there's not a minion in play? Well, um, you do have chase them down after your hero attacks and defeats an enemy, remove two threat from a scheme. But Jeremy, you said that Ms. Marvel doesn't have a good attack. Well, then maybe, maybe we can go in here into our support section, right? And pick up an upgrade called combat training. It stays in play. It costs two to play it once. Then Miss Marvel all of a sudden has two. So what does that mean? I can attack with Miss Marvel for two, knock out a Hydra Bomber, and then play a chase them down for free and remove four threat from a scheme. That's perfect for Rhino, okay? All I have to do though is just get a combat training in play and then we're in business, right? So that could work out. That could be a nice little combo. It probably won't work very well, but this is what you do. You test things out. If they don't work, take them back. And then after that, you can just pepper in some allies, you know, like, um, you know, Wasp is really good because basically you play her. She has a lot of lightning resource, energy resource rather. And uh, you could just pay one for her to put her in as a blocker. You've got Brawn, you've got Hulk, you've got Spider Girl. These are all two cost allies that are really, really cheap. And you can just use them as blockers. Um, that's really good. Look at this guy, he's got five health. He's got five health. You can just use them to block attacks from minions to keep you alive longer, right? Those are some good cards you can add. Once you hit 40, just stop and stop building the deck because the less cards in your deck, the faster you can get to the events you need. And also, you can also filter some things through Bruno Corelli. Um, I was even gonna say that with Bruno Corelli, all of the cards you don't need in the deck anymore because you just want to focus on events, you could just stash them on Bruno Corelli infinitely and then just keep on, have your deck be only attack events. And then whenever you need to, draw him and then do a big turn of nothing but attack events and then use all of the cards you drew off of him, the three, to pay for your events. So that's it, man. That's how you build a Miss Marvel deck. That's it right there. I'm pretty sure I have more than 40 cards, so I will have to thin it out. And I'm also going to make a video playing with this deck against Rhino. So that way you guys can see if it works or not. But anyways, I hope that was a little bit clear. So remember, pick, uh, pick your hero, pick a hero, know your villain, know your hero, get your basic cards first out of the way. And then once you do that, fill in the gaps with whatever the aspect you think is going to work out best for the villain. If the villain schemes a lot, then pick justice. If you um, are tired of getting beat all the time, just pick leadership because you'll always win with leadership. It's so easy to play. Um, and then protection if you're feeling spicy, right? This is how you build a deck and uh, I hope it works out for you guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.